creature alive today who has survived millions of years of evolution without change, without passion, and without logic. It lives to kill. A mindless eating machine. It will attack and devour anything. It is as if God created the devil and gave him jaws. <laughs> From the best-selling novel, Jaws. Rated PG. Maybe too intense for younger children. Good evening, and welcome to episode number nine of Constriction Pictures. I'm your host, Bob O'Rourke, and uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here, And but this just might be the best episode of Constriction Pictures yet. I can just feel it. Can't you feel it? I feel this is definitely going to be special. Yeah, so, uh, absolutely. All right. And if you couldn't tell, um, tonight's guest is a guy by the name of John Larson. He's a drummer for a little band, a little Danish-American band called Volbeat. Um, but uh, first and foremost, I think uh, he was born a horror fan. He's certainly my horror brother from another mother. And uh, <laughs> we're, we're going we're gonna to talk about a, a little movie that you all out there might have seen or at least heard about. Uh, it's about a fish, right? Uh, 1975's Jaws. Right on. Um, so uh, first thing, as I usually like to do on Constriction Pictures, we break down some film facts. Um, you know, obviously there's a whole history of the making of the movie and, and um, you know, how Spielberg pretty much almost ended his career before it began. Uh, so I'm not going to get into all the nitty gritty of it with the trivia and film facts and stuff, because there's probably podcasts out there just about the making of Jaws. <laughs> um there's a whole life out there about oh, the making. Totally. Course. I mean, there's books about it. Come on now. Um, so, you know, filming started on May 2nd, 1974, over on Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts. And, um, you know, perhaps one day we'll get out there. That's of all the filming locations that I've been to and some of the ones you've checked out, I'm sure, you know, we, that's the Holy Grail, right? Uh, kind of. Yeah. Close enough. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, okay. Filming wrapped on October 6th, 1974. And, you know, it was supposed to be uh, only a 55-day shoot, but instead it became 159 days. Uh, and again, you know, Spielberg was almost fired, this and that. We kind of know the history. Um, it was released in the U.S. on June 20th, 1975, and the budget was uh, roughly $9 million, uh, grossing $470.7 million The and. As we said, I'm pretty sure that's just the U.S. alone. And then it was released in Denmark on uh, December 26th, 1975. And that's where I'm guessing you eventually saw it, right, John? Well, I didn't actually get to see it, even though I tried to persuade my mom to go because I would use the old trick that every small kid would use was say, but mom, everybody else has seen it. But she wouldn't budge. And in those days, actually, Jaws was you had to be 16 mm -hmm. to be allowed to see it in the theaters. And since I was around five years old, that was definitely a no-go. Um, I became aware of the movie um, from magazines, newspaper clippings, um, because it was such a big hit in the U.S. So even before it, it had its premiere in, in Denmark at Christmas in 75, you know, there would be a lot of articles, pictures, uh, ads in the papers. And my mom and dad and myself, we cut out all these ads, pictures, articles, everything. But sadly, they got lost over the years, which is a shame because it would be fun to see what it really was. I do remember one of, one of the ads was actually – an ad for a um, a um, insurance company for some reason, but that must that must have been a bit later. That must have been in seventy six because I also remember this is kind of a sidetrack that 
they would also the same insurance company would use uh, the poster from the 1976 King Kong, actually. Cool. So this must have been a little tiny bit later, but I did not get to see the movie until it came out on on video back then. And as I said before, I'm I I think I was eight years old, but again, it, it doesn't really make sense that I was only eight when I saw it. I, I was probably more like 10 or 11 because, um, like I said, VCRs, home video systems, weren't really that common at that point. They were very expensive and very few people actually had the money to buy uh, a VCR. So you could actually rent them. Right. Pay, a, pay like a monthly fee. Mm-hmm. And when when it started happening, the whole home video system, it was, it was the selection of movie in Denmark, at least, wasn't very big. It was, it was like C action type of movies, um, some Danish comedies, um, a few horror movies, and yeah, of course, porn because <laughs> porn was big. But again, we were not allowed to to watch porn. But I remember my childhood friend; his parents actually got a VCR, and the first weekend that they actually rented movies, they wanted to rent Jaws because Jaws was the movie to rent. At, at least when you saw the cover, I mean, yeah. you, you cannot fail. I mean, mm-hmm. female swimmer, big giant sharks, can't go wrong. And we were just waiting for them to come home. And when they came home, they came home with a movie with a shark on it. And we thought, jackpot, they, Jaws. Turns out it wasn't Jaws. It was Mako, the Jaws of Death, actually. So that was kind of like the first shark movie that I saw was right. actually Mako, Jaws of Death. But a couple of weeks later, they actually did manage to, to track down Jaws, and we finally got to see it. And for those two hours, I was just mesmerized. You know, I pretty sure, like I said, I, I didn't blink my eyes once. I probably didn't. I probably held my breath for those two hours. I was just mesmerized. I've been waiting for like a couple of years to see it. I mean, I've seen the pictures, I've seen everything, and all of a sudden, there it is. It was like Christmas Eve. That's awesome. That's 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 really cool, because, you know, I know um, definitely here in the States, video, everything you said, it's pretty much identical in terms of renting VCRs and all that stuff. And for, for me, with Jaws, I honestly don't remember the first time I saw it, but I, I remember my parents used to go to this, take me to this tavern i guess you could call it i mean technically i mean i always thought it was a bar but um it was the place where they actually met but we would go there for dinner um and i remember sitting there at some of the really high tables and for whatever reason every time we'd go in there one of the jaws movies would be playing on tv which was just you know random it must have been on one of the american cable channels or something um but at a very small age and i i mean i knew what jaws was probably from you know, going and seeing it there um, because I had that, and you've seen that the the original rubber shark that I have, the yeah. you know, the, the toy, and yeah. I clearly remember my dad buying that for me at our little you know the little general store in town, um, and it had the Jaws logo, and then of course with the internet, looking looking back on it and finding it, seeing pictures of it, I'm like that's the packaging. So I knew what Jaws was at, at a tiny you know, and I was I was probably knee high to a duck you know, in terms of my age. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty much everything you said, you know, I totally agree with and experience myself. I mean, it's just, it, it's one of those movies that just, it gets you. And I mean, I really can't think of anybody who doesn't like Jaws. Do you know what I mean? Like if you've, if you've seen it, how yeah. could you not like it? Yeah, that's true. Um, but I do have one little funny fact, actually. Mm-hmm. And this, this just shows the way it was in Denmark in the 70s. My parents used to go out every Saturday. They, we would go to, to like a slightly bigger town than the ones we lived in, and they would go shopping. And me being like five or six, they took me with them. Um, but that city had like... At that time, was it two or three cinemas? I think it was two cinemas. They had like the major cinema, which was like one big, huge screen. And then they had another cinema, which had like two or three screens in it. But the major one was the one that showed Jaws. And I swear to God, this is a true story. My parents dumped me in front of that movie theater. Of course, I couldn't go in, but 
I would just stand there and looking at the posters, looking at the lobby cards, and I was just stand there. And I could stand there for, I don't know, one hour, two hours while they went shopping. And I was just stand there completely mesmerized from everything. I was just looking at the pictures and imagine what it would be like to see the movie. It's like, oh, my God, this must be the biggest thing ever. And like I said before, I begged my parents to take take me to the cinema and see it. And they said no. <clears throat> and then one night my dad said, okay, you and I are going to the movies. I was like, oh, yeah, cool. We're going to the movies. Great. Oh, we're going to see. Oh, yeah, we're going to see Jaws. Yes, I finally get to see it. So he took me to the other movie theater. And I was like, hmm, okay, I don't, I don't think Jaws is playing here. Oh, never mind. We're still going to see Jaws. It's going to be great. So my dad got two tickets. And I went down. And they had like a big lobby hall where they had the candy shop. And he bought some candy. And they had this little thing in the corner where where it had like the lobby cards from Jaws. And I was like, oh yeah, there are the lobby cards, of course. We, we're going to see Jaws. Yeah. Went into the theater, sat down in our seats, you know, bags of candy and everything. Curtain departed. Those were the days when you had curtains at the theaters. And then it said, Walt Disney presents. Oh. Mm. That, 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 that doesn't look like Jaws. It turns out it was a Disney version of Robin Hood. Great movie, but still, yeah, yeah. I was kind of disappointed for like five minutes, and I forgot everything about it, and thought that Robin Hood was actually a great cartoon anyway. Yeah, as soon as that theme song started, you were hooked, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, too, um, you know, you were talking about the movie theaters and stuff um, in Denmark. Now, I know in the states. Um, my dad has told me stories about going to see that in the theater and, and literally the lines, and I've seen the pictures, I'm sure you've seen the pictures mm. too, where people yeah, yeah. were literally, literally the lines were stretching like across the parking lot, you yeah. know, and around the block. I mean, literally that's how the term blockbuster, you know, was coined. Was it like yeah. that in Denmark? <sighs> Not that I recall. Hmm. No. Um, I don't recall seeing any pictures or any articles <clears throat> of people waiting in line like for blocks and blocks and blocks wow. like like they do in America. Mm -hmm. um, um, no, I don't I don't I don't think so. I don't think that's very I don't think that's really a Danish mentality actually. I really? mean if it's sold out then it's like, eh, all right, <laughs> we'll next time. Is. Yeah, next time or um, or something. <clears throat> I remember because I have I have a poster from the exorcist the danish exorcist poster mm -hmm. and when that came out uh somebody must have printed like an advertising poster on how horrific the exorcist are sure that people were fainting in the cinemas they would have you know amb um paramedics outside carrying people out of of the cinema and to be honest, I never really believed that. I thought it was kind of hyped. I know The Exorcist for its time were completely different, and yeah. people were terrified about it. I was terrified as well when I saw it. I was scared for years. But <clears throat> I talked to my mother-in-law about it because she actually saw The Exorcist in the theaters, in the biggest theater we, we had in Copenhagen. It's still running. And she said, well, she didn't see anybody faint, but there were actually paramedics there in case of people were sure. fainting because the exorcists were that horrifying. Yeah. So, but I don't recall anything like that from, from Jaws actually. Wow. So, all right. So I, I guess we're kind of, we're starting to bleed into the next, uh, next topic. Um, any significant things about the film? I know. And, and I was just thinking about this, um, you know, here, you know, every 4th of July, you know, um, we, we put on Jaws. We put on all four movies. Put them, just put them on rotation. We'll have people yeah. over for a barbecue, and literally any minute you come into the house, it'll be a Jaws movie. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, what really stands out for you about the film? Is there like a certain vibe, a certain atmosphere? I mean, what really draws you to it? Um, I don't. I don't really know. I think it was a combination from back then when I was a kid, when I couldn't see it, and um, I would imagine what it would be like to see it, and mm -hmm. I would imagine how the movie was, because even as, as kids, we were actually playing Jaws, so we knew 
the three principal characters, we didn't know the name of them. We knew one of them was a fisherman. We knew one of them was a police officer. And we weren't sure about the third one, but there was a th third guy. So, so we would play Jaws as, as kids. Um, but I, I don't know. I think it's just, it's a combination of a lot of things. I mean, first of all, it's, it's in my point of view, it is Spielberg's best movie. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it, down. And I think just everything in, in the movie works. I mean, he, those three guys were not like major movie stars. They were, I, I guess Robert Shaw was probably the best known of the three of them. Sure. But he wasn't like a major star like Robert Redford or Clark Gable or any, anybody like that. And I think the characters, you believe in the characters. They're mm -hmm. believable characters. None of them are like Superman or Batman or something like that. They're more or less like you and me. Yeah. I, I like I like what you just said that about, about them not being well-known actors because – I think you take like, um, we'll take like the Godfather, you know, Godfather yeah. and Godfather part two. It's like at the time, those actors were relatively unknown. You know, yeah. Tally Shire had done Rocky. Uh, Pacino hadn't really broken out yet and done anything. Robert De Niro certainly hadn't done anything yet when he did Godfather part two. But then when Godfather part three came out, you know, it, it almost seemed like everybody wanted to be in the movie. And yeah. to me, I can't watch it because I'm like, you know, that's, you know, George Hamilton and that's Andy Garcia and you know, all these yeah. people just, they're like, it's distracting. And I think that's one of the things, like you said, they are, the characters come across as everyday people. That could be you, that could be me, you know? And, and I think maybe that's another reason why, um, you know, I, I've, I've heard that a lot of people have been inspired to become oceanographers, you know, or really get yeah. involved with studying sharks. I mean, even Peter Benchley uh, did that after the film. He kind of, you know, got into um, saving the sharks, you know, that, that kind of yeah, thing. I, I, I think in some ways, this might be wrong, but I think actually ben, Benchley in some ways were kind of terrified when, when he saw what the movie did to sharks. Right, right, yeah. He wrote a novel. He was poor. He wrote this novel about this giant fish, um, but there are so many subplots in in the novel that probably wouldn't have worked as a movie anyway. Um, but I think just because you know everybody, <clears throat> especially in America, got so terrified about sharks and they were hunting sharks, they were killing sharks everywhere. I think he, he might have felt some sort of guilt, perhaps, and sure. decided to devote the rest of his life to actually preserve and save the shark. Yeah. And, uh, a lot of people, yes, definitely got inspired to become marine biologists or movie makers or, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's, it makes a hell of an impact. Now, um, speaking of the characters, too, significant characters, I mean, we kind of already touched on, you know, the, the main characters. But, I mean, personally, I got to, I mean, whenever, whenever I see Quint, I mean, it, I can't really pick out, I, I can't really put words to the emotion that it, it it's like that dude is legit. Um, mm. You know, and, and actually whenever I see somebody wearing, you know, a headband on, you know, the way he does, <laughs> I instantly think of Quint, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I mean, now in the, in, in the internet day and age and Facebook, you know, we always have the memes and I've even done it myself with, with him crushing the beer can, you know, to yeah. kind of symbolize, you know, manliness and stuff. Or yeah. so, that for me, I think he's probably my favorite character in the movie. But I mean, what about you? I mean, who, who I don't do you really go? have. I don't really have a favorite character no. out of the three. It's just the whole combination of the three of them because they're three completely different people who are stuck in in this situation, and they have to work together sure. in some way or the other to fix what uh, that problem that they have with, with this giant fish. And I mean, Quint is. In the movie, at least, he's a, at least as dangerous as a shark. Sure. I mean, there, I've I've been reading uh, reading books about people, uh, you know, putting everything into the movie, everything from from like that he's a psychopath, that he has a death wish, or you know, he's this and that, and they're this and that. I mean, people are trying sometimes, I think, to overanalyze it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's basically a great popcorn movie. It's a great. Is it even a horror movie? Some say it is. Some say yeah. it's not. I mean, for me, it's a horror movie. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. The other thing too, I remember as a kid, whenever I would be in the pool, and I'd have my, 
I'd have my goggles, you know, and I'd spit in them and, you know, kind of do the thing, you know, just yeah. like Hooper. And yeah. it, it's like, I can't not do that whenever I see goggles or I have to wear goggles. It's just, you know, and then I have to say, I got no spit, you know, yeah. I mean, it's just, um, yeah. now, do you, now there, there's, there's a lot of standout moments in Jaws. Um, normally with, you know, if we are covering a straight ahead horror movie, I mean, obviously we've agreed this is a horror, horror film, um, but there's always like a coolest or favorite kill. Um, okay. So what about you? I mean, what, what stands out for you? Definitely. I would say the first time I saw it, when, when the shark jumps and lands on the boat and devours yeah. Quinn. Yeah. That was like, holy crap. Yeah. I mean, wasn't that, I wasn't really scared. I was, I was just like, wow, that's amazing. And I mean, it it is a pretty horrifying death when, when you look at it and, you know, like some claim in some people claims in some book, yeah, he had a death wish and it was bound to happen. And, you know, but one of them probably had to die in the movie anyway. So it, it probably had to be him, but that was definitely one of the moments. The first time that I saw it was when, when they had, when they have this great, sh- great shot of the shark coming out of the water with his jaws agape and lands on the boat, and then he tumbles down and, and gets eaten. I was like, "Oh my god, this is so amazing!" Yeah, that that shot, especially. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't that like the first time we see like a full shot, or at least the most complete shot of the shark up until that point? And right, oh, yeah. yeah. So I mean, it, it's kind of like when that happens. It's like holy shit! Look at the size of this thing, and then you get that crazy death with with Quentin. I, I always remember, of course, like I said, seeing it on TV, um, him vomiting the blood. That yeah. always, I mean, just that's brutal. And you know, when I had first seen it when I was a little kid, I didn't know if he was a good guy, a bad guy, because he he kind of came off, you know, um, you know, macho, kind of jerky. So I was like, oh, the bad guy's getting eaten, you know, finally. And, but, you know, obviously as an adult watching it, I'm like, oh, you know, he, he does have that sort of Captain Ahab vibe that's in the book, um, but not so much in the movie. Oh, I, I do remember um, seeing it some years later, we were a bunch of guys and girls, you know, having a movie night and Jaws was one of the movies and, you know, everybody loved the movie, but I remember that scene when he slides down and gets eaten, yeah. some of the girls were actually not crying, but they were like, oh, no, not him. Why him? And I was like, okay, well, he's kind of like the bad guy without being like the real bad guy. But he's kind of a jerk, especially to Hooper. But they were like, oh, no, why him? Why does it have to be him who's eaten? And I was like, hmm, okay, yeah, yeah, sure, why not? Now, uh, the the other standout one for me is definitely, because I, I got to agree, I mean, the Quint, Quint death probably right at the top for me um but right below that maybe neck and neck depending on the day of the week maybe it's above it alex kintner i mean that's just that shot of him flailing about and the bubbly water blood spitting up dude crazy crazy and again this is something that you could do back then in the 70s and, and probably 80s as well. That wouldn't work today. I mean, they wouldn't be allowed to do no. a scene like that today. There's, well, there's no way. Um, slight tangent, you know, um, sometimes on construction pictures, we like to go into like Tangentville, you know. Um, speaking of a certain other movie that you may or may not have seen yet, The New Halloween. Have you seen it? Did you get, did, did you get to go? <sighs> no. Oh! Oh, I'm hoping to go tomorrow. I'm, so, planning to do it tomorrow okay because so, i keep saying that i know that because th- th- there was there was a certain kill on that that i know um you know sandy my wife was very she was uh very upset by but uh oh. you know but we'll, we'll talk about it <laughs> once you see it <laughs> All right, yeah. but um yeah you know uh, but i i agree too i mean the fact that you know here you got this this little boy being eaten by a shark and and i mean you know let's let's go um let's go a little more modern with uh, the Meg that just came out. I mean, we were talking mm-hmm. about that and, yeah. and I mean, you would think on paper or something like that is going to be a bloodbath, especially that, that scene where, um, where the shark is basically, you know, pulling the jaws and attacking the beach. But yeah. I mean, the damn thing is so big, it's just going to swallow everybody whole, you yeah. know, and there's, there's yeah. hardly any blood. So, and that was a PG 13, I think, right? Yeah. 
<clears throat> yeah, yeah, it was it was scaled down to PG thirteen. I think originally they wanted to do like an R rated movie. Mm -hmm. That's what I read, um, but all of a sudden they changed their minds, and it's like, oh no, we we gotta have kids to go and see it because kids are the one who has the money. So they took away any like gory kind of sequence, and especially the one where where it comes into the big beach. I was kind of going, oh yeah, finally, right, right. Like, some people get eaten, and nothing really happened. It happened, and I was like, oh man, really? But Either it was never filmed as a gory version, mm -hmm. or it's something that we will never see if they did like right. a more blood version of it. Not so, when it comes out on Blu-ray or DVD no. later this year, there will be no like unrated version or gory version. It's maybe it doesn't exist. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know. Probably, <clears throat> you know, and, and that kind of actually goes into the next the next uh, question that I had was. You know, what do you think Jaws' lasting impact is? And and I think we're already kind of scratching at that right now by talking about a movie like The Meg, where I know certain other movies, whether it's Halloween or Friday the 13th, any slashers, I mean, they had endless imitators. Um, obviously, Dawn of the Dead had all the Italian, you know, zombies and the Spanish zombies that, you know, all those types of movies. Um, and Jaws, I mean, there was a few Italian ripoffs. Um, yeah. Yep. were inspired by uh and there's certainly in i guess it was probably in the 90s there was a lot of those direct video shark movies that i mean i didn't even waste my time but what do you what do you think about some of those movies uh, there are there, definitely some shark movies out there that are worth seeing mm -hmm. there's a lot of them that are completely horrible um but <clears throat> i think there's definitely some good ones out there i i like the shallows for instance yeah that was good uh, 40 meters down, 47 meters down, I thought was, wasn't really that bad as mm -hmm. people claimed it was. Um, the Italian one, uh, Great White, is probably the one you think yeah, of. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, that one is so bad that it's good. Oh, of course. Of course. That's, a, that's a popcorn movie late at it's, night. It's a popcorn movie, and they were actually, I've read that somewhere, they were talking about doing a sequel to it. Mm. But, uh, unfortunately, or... Fortunately, depending on how you look at it, that rubber shark, that fake, really fake-looking shark, apparently got destroyed. So, so they never got around to make the sequel. But there were actually plans to do a sequel to wow. to White. But Great White, I guess, is is sort of mythical because it got banned in the U.S. I mean, we had it in theaters here. Mm -hmm. I got the Danish poster for it. It was in theaters in Europe, uh, and probably in Japan and and. Out in the east, to probably I've I've seen some posters from I think Thailand, a Thai poster of it. Um, but it, it was just like when Great White came out here, it was actually the title was actually the Last Jaws. Right. So they kind of tried to tie it into the Jaws series because mm -hmm. Jaws one, of course, has been out in Jaws two, and I think Great White came out in, what eighty one or something. Yeah, eighty one, eighty two. So that was before Jaws 3D. So in Denmark, they tried to build it as a Jaws movie. It, sure. Oh, it, it, it wasn't, but, you know, if you can track it down, I mean, it's it's fun to watch. It's horrible, but it's fun. But I think what other ones, uh, what's it called, Red Water with Lou Diamond Phillips? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. As I recall, I thought that one was, was okay. Um 20 uh there's another one about the jersey attacks oh yeah yeah that one um god what was that one called i remember hearing about it and i was like oh and we probably talked about it you know uh, one of our hangs 20 20 days 18 18 days or something uh, i think there are like two or three versions of, the, of those attacks i can't remember the one uh, that i got but that one was pretty good but mostly those direct to videos uh, shark movies from like yeah I guess late late 80s maybe already mm -hmm. or at least 90s yeah uh, a lot of them are terrible cinema garbage <laughs> yeah, no. too much coverage. I mean I watched a lot of them and I used to every time I would go out looking for for movies I was actually looking at the shark section to see and I've I've got some horrible ones but I have to admit I've actually stopped watching those my life is too short for that now yeah. i don't want to do it anymore when they're all cgi it's just like no nah, i can't i don't even want to bother 
And that, that's, one of, that's one of the things that I don't really like about shark movies these days is, is because they're all CGI movies. Yeah. I know it's way easier to do it now, and you can actually... I think the shark in, in, in um, the shallows looks pretty good most of the time. Yeah, for sure. The mech, the mech sharks looked kind of okay, not as great as I thought they would be for like a big budget movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's one of the other things that for me really works in Jaws is actually you don't really see the shark. Right. You, you can, you know, it's there because of that fantastic music by, by John Williams, but you don't really see it. There's like, I think at least for the first hour of the movie, you don't see it. The first time you kind of see a glimpse of it is, is the estuary attack. That's the first time you actually see a little bit of it and you Mm -hmm. don't, you see side of its head and that's basically it. You don't really see the shark until that famous, why don't you come down and chump some of this shit? Yeah. It rises above above the water. That's the first time you kind of see the shark. And that's like after like a one hour and 10 minutes of the movie. If I'm pretty sure if they did it today, you'll probably see it right from the beginning. Right. Now, what what do you, what, what are your thoughts on, and this is probably a totally separate episode or series of episodes, but um, obviously, there's a few sequels of Jaws, yeah. um, and uh, you know, speaking of theatrical uh, experiences, the only one that I've been managed to see on first run was Jaws: The Revenge. I yeah, saw that when I was five years old, so it holds yeah. a special place. Um, of course, my wife she saw Jaws three in the theater. So yeah. she's she's got that on me. And Friday yeah. the Thirteenth Part Three in the theater. Well, I, w- I was actually supposed to go and see Jaws three in the theaters, but my friend and I, we thought that we could cheat us cheat our way in the theaters and buy tickets to another movie. And then we were like, "Oh yeah, when we go up the stairs, we just turn right instead of going left. Nobody will figure out that we went and, s- and saw Jaws instead." But unfortunately, the guy who you know clips our ticket, he was standing at the top of the <sighs> stairs. At our tickets, and he was like, "Yeah, you you gotta go left." And we were like, "Yeah, yeah, we know." Busted. Yeah, kind of busted. So we, I didn't get to see Jaws 3D in the theaters either. So yeah, the Revenge is actually the only one I've ever seen in like a, a, a decent theater. I mm-hmm. would say not even a major theater, but a decent theater. And and you've seen you've seen the original Jaws though in some of these revivals, right? Like when it. No, because I have always been out on the road or yeah. something has happened I've, ne- I've never really seen it on like a big big screen i did go to a screening um uh, about yeah for a lot of years ago uh, we have this kind of art house film museum kind of thing in in, in copenhagen and they would have like some theme months and mm-hmm. one year they had like the 70s theme going so one night they actually showed halloween the original halloween nice. which i didn't go to see but they showed jaws so i got pay, uh, tickets for that and i brought a friend of mine who has never seen the movie and i was like yes this is going to be good because he hates horror movies he can't stand them he's terrified of horror movies and i was like yeah we're gonna go see jaws you know it's gonna be fine unfortunately the copy of the movie that they had was so banged up it was a complete mess but it worked out fine you know there was a lot of scratches and it was jumping a bit up and down mm-hmm. and i was waiting for the scene when the head pops out of the boat because that's one of the big scenes where everybody jumps up and popcorns are flying and everything and i was just waiting and i was looking at my friend because he was like clenching his fist to the seat because you could hear the music and he's going to the hall and it's like oh yeah oh yeah here it comes then it got cut out oh I was missing, and I was like, "Oh no!" So you, he got to, gets to the hole, and then it cuts to the argument of of the, of the billboard sign. I was like, "No!" And then for the death scene of Quint, I was waiting again for that one, and again that one was cut. So basically, five minutes of the movie was gone. So either it was because the print was so bad mm-hmm. that it's the only thing they could save or they might have got it from i think finland because i read somewhere that the finnish version of jaws is pretty heavy cut wow that's crazy and that you know including quinn's death is actually cut from from the movie especially the part where he vomits up the blood yeah that, that's got to be why then that's like um that reminds me of the stories of like last house on the left where like um you know projectionists would actually cut certain things out of the movie themselves <laughs> 
And, yeah. you know, so there would be all these multiple versions floating around, but in terms of like print damage too, I mean, I saw, um, God, it's probably almost 20 years ago now. Um, my cousin and I went to see, uh, uh, Halloween at this, there was this, this crew, um, and I guess they still do shows down in uh, Philadelphia and, yeah. um, they used to be based out of South Jersey and they would do double features of grindhouse movies. And we went down there and it was, I want to say it was Halloween and Texas Chancel Massacre. 35 millimeter prints. Awesome, right? Mm. Halloween, beaten up, look, was in rough, rough shape. And at the yeah. very end, I mean, the, the whole ending sequence with him shooting Michael and all that stuff, it, it's like you blink and it was over because it was all this print damage and it jumped yeah. around and, you know, people were laughing and it was like, oh. It's not supposed to be like that, you know. Yeah, so it was, it was a little, little defeating. So I, I, I feel your pain with Jaws, you know. Yeah, because that's actually the only time I've seen it in, in like, kind of a theater. I've, I've seen it. Uh, I think that must have been like a sixteen millimeter version of it. Sure. At a gymnasium hall, uh, once, uh, which was actually pretty cool. Uh, because you know, I've I've heard the stories of people screaming in the theaters, especially when the head pops out and the shark comes out of the water, yeah. and people were screaming and terrified. But I never really believed it. I was like, yeah, it's probably hype or something. But when I saw it in that gymnasium full of kids, and we were like 14, 15 years old, everybody, all the girls, everybody would definitely scream when Chrissy Steth appears in the movie. The, the girl. Death, you know, you could feel that kids were going like, "Ugh, this is this is this is uncomfortable." And when the kidna boy dies and blood sprays all over, people were screaming. And sure enough, when the head pops out, people were literally standing up screaming. Wow! Uh, I've heard stories about that, but I never really believed it. It was like, ah, it's probably hype or something, you know, to get people to see the movie. But turns out it it was actually it was actually true. You know, people were definitely screaming alongside. I had an English teacher in school and he had seen it in its original run in the theaters. And he brought, you know, a date with him and he said, you know, as soon as that that scene where the head pumps up pops out, you know, his arm would literally be up in the air because he was holding her hand and she would stand up in the theater screaming like everybody else would, would stand up and scream. And I guess it's because you have never seen anything like it at that point. That's true too. Yeah. That, I mean, you, yeah. you think 1975, nobody had made a movie like that. I mean, all the underwater monster movies were, you know, um, I don't want to say goofy, but they were a little primitive compared to what Spielberg ended up doing with that, you know, and certainly the gore, nobody had seen anything like that at that point. No, I mean, Underwater movies back then wasn't really that, you know, that that great. I mean, you had Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea, which had a shark sequence, which yeah. was kind of cool, which was kind of freaky and scary, but it was still a Disney movie. Sure. Um, but you know, other than that, sharks in movies prior to Jaws was never really like a main character anyway. There might be a few movies where you see a fin or maybe a shark way back in the distance, so you didn't really knew that much about them anyway. And then this movie comes out, you know, where you have this huge monster of a shark eating people. And I um, guess people were, again, yeah, they were terrified because they'd never seen anything like it. It was new at the time. Yeah. Now, did it, did it have the same effect that it had over here in terms of people not wanting to go to the beaches? Uh, I mean... No, I don't think so because you know we do not really have sharks in our water. Sure, sure. The few types of sharks that we have are actually kind of small. Uh, we don't really have any like major big sharks mm -hmm. or, or any of the man eaters for sure is not in in our water. So, I mean, it probably scared some. Uh, I wouldn't doubt it, but I think it was definitely not as hysterical as it was in the U.S. That's for sure. Yeah, man alive but it's definitely one of those movies that we keep going back to we love it mm. um this has been a great little chat don't you think yeah absolutely yeah, yeah um i mean do you have any anything final you want to say about jaws or you know any of the any of the sequels i mean should 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 you rank the sequels how how, how would you rank the sequels 
or the or the entire series rather? Well, of course you cannot beat the original. Right. It's one of it's one of the greatest movies of all time. Um, so you 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 cannot um, beat that one. As for the sequels, I have a soft spot for Jaws three. Um, I always have. Um, I guess it's be- because it's 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 actually so stupid that it's good. Right. Totally. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's. I know that it's kind of a ripoff from Gargo somewhere. Intentional. I'm not so sure about that, but it it it's more like a B monster movie. Yeah, definitely. And I like B it's monster fun. movies. Uh, Jaws of Revenge, yeah, I saw it in the theaters, and back then I thought it was pretty cool. I actually saw it two or three times in, in the theaters, but when I see Jaws of Revenge today, it's just a huge mess. <laughs> it's, 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 I mean, it's, it's mind-boggling that they actually did it. Um, I read some stories about the production of it, and, and the production was as chaotic as the movie, actually, and I always felt now I feel sorry for Lorraine Gary that she was cast in that she had to monstrosity do it. For movie. As for as for Jaws two, when when I saw Jaws two on video back then, I really loved it. <clears throat> but if I see Jaws two now, I think it's it's a bit too slow. It's too long, definitely, uh, and it kind of annoys me that again you have this monster shark circling all these boats and nothing really happens right exactly exactly that's probably the biggest problem that i have with it is i think it's too long and uh, there's part of the uh, part of the of the characters in it that that i that i think they made a mess of I'm, i mean i get it that they do that whole brody is paranoid thing and why would there be another shark but on the other hand it's kind of like well this why don't they really pay attention to him? You know, mm-hmm. he might be right that there could actually be another shark in there instead of they're kind of ignoring that what happened in in the original movie, and that that kind of bugs me about yeah. it. Yeah, I, I agree though that it's definitely too long and and it's a wasted yeah. opportunity. I mean, just this year when we were watching, you know, um, Fourth of July, watching uh, all the movies, we're sitting there and and I found myself pulling my phone out (laughs) looking at stuff because i'm like this is dull this is way too long and that one girl that screams her head off the entire movie it's a joke at our house you know everybody's like she needs to die um and of course i I don't know what what is the body count there's only like what three or four maybe five people that die and you have a whole gang of kids and none of them get eaten except two of them i think this whole death count is 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 five but it's like two divers that you don't know anything about the water skier and the one who drives drives the boat, which is again these characters that you, that you don't really know right, and you don't right. really care about them. As for for the girls screaming throughout the movie, I found that very annoying as well. Uh, until I actually read the book behind um, the movie, um, and it some of the scenes now actually makes more sense why she screams that much, mm-hmm. but that's because you know they cut out some stuff. Oh, okay. Um, if you remember <clears throat> the the last sequence at that cable junction thing, mm-hmm. where she goes completely nuts and screams her head off, like where you kind of go, "Oh, shut! Will you please shut up or die or do something?" Why she's reacting the way she's reacting is because one of the other characters is actually eaten in front of her. Ah, oh. but um, I, I. No, I'm not sure if they ever filmed it, but there are some photos. You can find some photos on the web. If you okay. type in Bob's death in Jaws 2, there you there are like two or three photos available. I think they actually tried to shoot it maybe two or three different ways, uh-huh. but because of the rating system, because they had to keep it as a PG rating, right. his death was actually cut. And that's why you don't really see him at the end of the movie, because he's actually dead. Oh, wow. Um, so that's, that is why she's, she's reacting so hysterical at the end is because she actually see him gets devoured. Um, so that kind of makes sense. So, so that's, I guess, some sort of bad editing. Wow. Um, I'll have to go, go and watch it again now. <laughs> yeah. Look, look for, look for the last sequence at the cable junction. Mm-hmm. 
uh, when she goes completely bonkers and screams her head off. That's that's actually his death scene that that was cut out of, of the movie. Very cool. All right then. Well, um, listen, this has been awesome. I'm glad that we could finally uh, get together and make this happen. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks again. Do you have any final final parting words? Uh, well, uh, let's see. Yeah, go watch Jaws. It'll make your life feel better. Watch Jaws once a day. keeps the doctor away. Exactly. I love it. Okay. <laughs>